The following is a presentation of the Four Center podcast feed. From the center of the galaxy, this is the Four Center podcast feed. I'm Ken Napstock for another edition of Star Wars Rank. Me and a guest ranking things in Star Wars, and this is going to be a fun one. This is going to be a big one. This is going to be one we have been waiting to deliver. It is our favorite Obi-Wan Kenobi moments, and you know that means (laughs) red carpet is rolled out for Joseph Scrimshaw. Hello, friend. Hello. I am happy to be here. Happy to be on the red carpet having Kenobi fever. It's a condition that I have all the time, but it has gone up several degrees as the whole world is experiencing Kenobi fever. What a great time (laughs) to be a fan of Obi-Wan Kenobi. It is. It is. And I I love Kenobi. I think I love your love for Kenobi (laughs) uh, just as much. Um, Man, it's just fun. It's fun time. It's going to be a a great episode. And, And as always, we always say, oh, it was hard. It was hard for me to sit down and, and when we're ranking moments, it can sometimes be a little line, a big line, a sequence. And, and, and there's so many with Kenobi that I even started to draw blanks, Joseph, because I just <laughs> it was just like too much, too much to choose from. So it's going to be a lot of fun today. How how uh, how was your uh, selection process? Was there a lot of pain involved? You know, it it was painful as always. I knew a couple that I really wanted to be in the top. It was painful when I got to the honorable mentions and had to cut a few from the honorable mentions to keep it <laughs> a, a reasonable length. And then it was really joyful because there were some moments that I knew I wanted and I lost uh, basically like an hour of working time because I was just going on a Disney plus bonanza where I could just jump from Kenobi moment to Kenobi moment. <laughs> yeah. And kind of assess, verify, but mostly just enjoy. Yeah. Yeah. I was a little bummed. They uh, they do real uh, fun things with like lists, like best Ahsoka episodes or key Clone Wars or their visions is highlighted right now. And they had like Kenobi ones like last week, I thought I remembered. So I signed in like, oh, this is going to be, oh, wait, where's that list? I have to do it myself now. Oh, God. So it caused me a little extra stress here. Um, going to be a lot of fun today as we uh, work through our list. But before we do that, this is a great opportunity, Joseph, for you to talk about uh, a little uh, side project you had uh, <laughs> uh, created for yourself here to get uh, to get yourself into the pages of the Kenobi novel by uh, Jonathan Jackson Miller uh, towards the end of the what now is kind of the Legends run. But uh, this was post the sale and kind of give a little review of this book. I love that you did this. It's a book that I haven't read, but I've always had on my like mental list if I have time. I'd love to take a swing through this one. Uh, and, and people out there have been following you on this journey and they want to know. So what's your thoughts on this book here? Yeah, I got a, a, a lot of nice uh, uh, comments and questions because I just I just read it to read to read it. We weren't going to um, be covering it on the podcast doing a, a deep dive because there's so many great Star Wars books coming out. And I uh, finished it, uh, finished reading it on my balcony in the sun. The sun was beating down and I felt like Obi-Wan Kenobi. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, with, I just needed one more sun and I took a picture of the book uh, and shared it on social media. And many people were kind of like, hey, could we get even like a little mini review, which is a fun way to approach it uh, because I know that a ton of people know this novel love Mm. this novel and other people are kind of i think curious should i give it a try so i'm going to try to do a mostly spoiler free uh very short review here ken um Mm. big picture i really really enjoyed it this was a book that it was it was a lot about mood and atmosphere and and Mm. really picking the genre of mostly western uh, and, and then all kind of these major Star Wars themes, the kind of things that Kenobi would be wrestling with in this moment, right when he gets to Tatooine and settles in and kind of push them all through uh, the mood of the Western. And you kind of settle into it. And a lot of the book is constructed that the only time we hear very directly from Kenobi is he has these uh, meditations where he's trying to reach Qui-Gon. And he's it's really just a journal entry (laughs) Mm -hmm. uh, for the reader. Um, And that was my only tiny little criticism is that sometimes in those meditations with Qui-Gon, I love the spirit of everything that Kenobi was saying and thought he was exactly uh, he was exactly where he he, uh, it makes sense for him to be. Every once in a while, there was kind of a word choice that didn't quite land with me. But that was the Mm -hmm. only thing about the book I didn't I didn't like. I thought um, the rest of it was great. Um, it had this great experience for me where at first there's the like, okay, one of the reasons that I, I didn't c- come to this book right away is that like, how much, how much Kenobi is in this Kenobi book? <laughs> the picture looks great, but you flip yeah. it open and you're hearing, seeing all these other characters names and like, I want to spend time with Kenobi. The book is so well written. 
that you fall in love uh, with the other characters, with their world. Uh, then you really see Kenobi through their eyes as he interacts with them. And in his beat-to-beat -beat dialogue with the other characters, he is so well-written, so spot-on. I when reading this, I felt like Ewan McGregor or James Arnold Taylor was, was speaking to me. Uh, it is so well-written. Uh, and then uh, kind of big-picture thing for me of why I really liked it in terms of the, uh, the thematic analysis that we give uh, on Force Center is it's really a story of Kenobi having failed Anakin, uh, mm -hmm. meeting other characters who are also kind of uh, middle-aged, if not in years, in spirit. <laughs> yes. And they are all struggling with how to guide their young. Mm -hmm. And one of the people who is struggling about how to guide the next generation ends up really failing, ends up being motivated by greed, a desire for power, using fear to get what he wants. And it's this really elegant thing without spoiling any of the details that Obi-Wan is dealing with a very different person, but kind of has to realize that he's facing somebody who is making some of the same kind of choices that Anakin did. And it just ties everything together uh, really absolutely uh, beautifully. The whole book is just like a really moving and, and evocative uh, just portrait of this time in Kenobi's life. And final thing, uh, mm -hmm. Kenobi uh, has this EOP uh, that he's, he has some misadventures with. And the, the uh, EOP is named Rue. <laughs> I don't know why I love that. Maybe it, it sounds like poo. And I really like uh, Ewan McGregor in the Christopher Robin movie. So maybe I just heard it that way. I don't yeah. know. But I'm kind of hoping in the uh, Kenobi television show that that's a little nod. And his EOP is named Rue. Yeah, well, I've seen those tweets on that. I think there's a, a, a big hope for that. Ah, oh, that's great. Uh, it's That's great. And, and um it's so interesting going into the show uh, just this coming week here, which is why we're obviously focusing on Kenobi, the character. I'm just so curious to see, not that they would, they would go in and pull stuff out of the book and everything, but just like it's got to have similar vibes and, and moods because it's the character in this point in his life. So I'm curious to see what they are able to uh, tap into in this book. Yeah, absolutely. I think, you know, this book has a different perspective because it really is. He just got there. Now, how is he going to mm -hmm. accept and, and get himself you know, committed to the mission. I think the TV show is going to be different because it's going to have this perspective of he's been 10 years <laughs> and he's, yeah. you know, the, he, he hasn't accepted everything. So I think it's gonna be a little bit different, but also potentially, I think some similar beats and that's really exciting. Fun stuff, fun stuff. Well, there you go, everybody. A bonus book review. <laughs> just scripture, our very own Kenobi aficionado, but I love Kenobi too. You all listening love Obi-Wan Kenobi. Why wouldn't you? He is a wonderful character who's uh, gone over many different generations of fandom. When did you meet him? Is the, you know, the crazy old wizard in the <laughs> desert? Is, is the, the great uh, negotiator uh, fighting alongside Anakin Skywalker? There's so many uh, animated prequel version. There's so many different ways uh, for the different generations to discover him. So we're going to dive into our favorite Obi-Wan Kenobi moments working our way five to one. Joseph, we finally reached this episode. It is with <laughs> uh, great intrigue and honor that I say to you, sir, what is your first choice at number five? Well, I just felt I needed to start with a greeting. Uh, so my number five is hello there. And that's exciting, right? But it, we got mm -hmm. two options, two main options uh, from the original trilogy and the prequel trilogy. Uh, but even though it is a callback to the original, my number five is the hello there from Revenge of the Sith and how it slides into his, the beginning of his confrontation with uh, Grievous. Mm -hmm. um, I remember sitting in the theater in 2005 and people had grumbled about, you know, lines that called back to other lines. And, you know, I wasn't sure about that myself at that time. Uh, and then sitting in that theater, Obi-Wan knows his mission so clearly of like, Grievous has to be stopped. That's the key to stopping this war. The council gave me this responsibility. I know I just need to stall for time until the clones arrive. What should I do? You know, <laughs> mm -hmm. rubbing his beard, thinking about it. Uh, robe comes off in the big jump, right? And then coming back up into the frame and the hello there, I applauded in the theater. I can't remember if many people joined me, but I applauded in the theater because it was just this perfect like, you know what? Uh, I'm just going to do the kind of the bold thing, the interesting thing, and I'm going to get this done. And, uh, you know, put myself out there in tons of risk uh, to get this done. And the hello there just has all that sort of like fun I'm kind of proper, but I'm also kind of cheeky <laughs> yeah, yeah. energy. Uh, and then flowing from there, 
that we get his his pose. He, you know, I know he's already done it in the film, but I I love the pose, the two fingers and the in the arm back with the saber. Uh, and then the great moment where he realizes ah, I don't need to go all fancy. I don't need to do all this and just drops the machinery on the Magna Guards. <laughs> yes, it's it's yes. just it's just a sequence of little Kenobi bombs in a in a row. So that's why I kind of picked it as my as my start. It represents many things. Hello there and confronting Grievous. Uh, yeah, big, big actions there. I love this fight with Kenobi. I love so much about it. And, you know, it's, it is it is a callback. And, and and it's so fun that something that Alec Guinness did in, uh, you know, on a shoot day, reading the script and his read of it in the, in the, in the 70s turns into this, something that's just such a calling card for this character. And it means different things. It, it is, like you said, it is a, a nice greeting. It's charging into action. It's a bit cheeky. Uh, I love everything about it. And, and it's a good T-shirt as well um <laughs> did you did you think going into uh the prequel era particularly revenge of the sith had you associated hello there with kenobi um because i'll say just i'll say from a personal point of view I, that was the first moment that it kind of clicked in like oh he does have kind of a call and card statement yeah i think i must have you know i don't think it was a line that had become you know in, in any mm -hmm. of my circles it wasn't a it's a trap you know or even right, the first right. transport is away yay but there was also like it wasn't like, oh, is that something he said before? It was like, yeah, no, of course. You know, it, it, I think that reading in, because it's the revelation, right? He's taking the hood down and the he's not somebody scary or dangerous. He's somebody friendly. That's the way it pops in, you know, A New Hope. So I think it always uh, resonated, but hadn't become like a, yes, of mm -hmm. course. <laughs> right, <laughs> if you yeah. have a Kenobi action figure and pull the doll, this is what he's going to say. It hadn't mm -hmm. become that. I think these, though, the combination of these two made it his business card. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I think you're right about that. That's why I love you've, you've selected this moment. And the first one, or the big one from A New Hope is, yeah, you're right, it kind of represents warmth. It's home, right? It's safety. It's all those things. It's this crazy thing just happened, and there's this old man going, well, hello there. Things are going to be okay. Absolutely right. And it, and it takes on uh, additional meaning with this sequence here. It does kind of cement it as um, – as, as, as his business card, as you said, uh, I love that. I love that. That's take. really great insight because yeah, it is so warm and friendly and original trilogy. It's almost like, well, would you like some tea? You know? So it's really casual. And I think that's the energy that makes it really fun when he is jumping in the middle of this horrific conflict to try to end a war. And he's just like, what's up? <laughs> and look, I, for one, Absolutely hope it is said again by Hugh McGregor in the Obi-Wan Kenobi series. At the time of this recording, you might be listening later on. With The series has not dropped. We are not yet a Star Wars celebration. We don't know. I, I mean, if it's the first words, I'll cheer. I don't care. I, I just, I just got to hear it. I want to hear it. <laughs> I would be very happy to hear it as well. <laughs> That's how this whole thing starts. Fade in. Kenobi turns to camera and goes, hello there. Let me tell you my story. <laughs> well, that is a great way to begin a true uh, multifaceted introduction and greeting from Obi-Wan Kenobi. Uh, we're on to my number five. And we're going to some wise words. There are a lot of quotes from Kenobi that you and I could pick and have picked here today. A lot of great insight. He is truly one of the great teachers of our time and many generations on film and in stories uh, as he was designed to be. But I am going with a little bit of a curveball for myself because I kind of pulled back in making this list. And I was like, what stands out to me now? It's a favorite moment. And this is a line that I have gone back to and I guess I could say learn from more, but also just became aware of its, its bigger meaning in the Star Wars story. But it's a line I grew up with. And I think that's part of the fun of Star Wars. It grows uh, with you or you grow up with Star Wars and you, you go back to it and you get new meaning. And it's from A New Hope. And it is uh, during the, that's the, no moon, that's a space station sequence there uh, in the cockpit of the Millennium Falcon when he says to Han Solo, you can't win, but there are alternatives to fighting. I, I it's like, to me, Joseph, I'm almost embarrassed that I just missed the big point behind that. <laughs> it's small. It's a thing. It's a reality. They're going to hide. They're going to sneak. That Star Wars tradition of putting on a stormtrooper costume or another outfit of a you know Imperial or First Order and sneaking around. It's a bit of a Star Wars thing. It's all those things. But it is Kenobi, uh, really a true Jedi in this moment, speaking to someone I identify with, Han Solo, and I am all always ready to fight. And I need to have someone remind me: you can't win. 
what you want to do won't work. You must look <laughs> for other solutions. You must look at the bigger picture and you must approach it with a different attitude. There are alternatives to fighting is so important to the core of what Star Wars is trying to say, continues to say. And Kenobi is at the center of that. And I think of George Lucas uh, saying about trying to cast Qui-Gon Jinn in, in 97, going, I need my Guinness. I need my Kenobi, who was the heart of that film. Calls him the heart of that film. And in so many ways, probably even off camera on set, Guinness, uh, Alec Guinness or Alec Guinness providing that kind of uh, veteran presence and leadership and all that stuff that's been talked about. But in the story, someone who, who number one, dies, who does go, he's not there the entire time. And he's, he's just dishing out this, these morsels of information. I thought about that when I thought about this line. This is a big statement from Obi-Wan Kenobi uh, buried in a, in a fun, memorable sequence about Space Station not being a moon. So that's my number five. <laughs> yeah, I think that's a really, really good pick. I think it is one of his uh, most important uh, bits of wisdom that he is uh, spreading everywhere in A New Hope. I, I think that it's great the way you describe kind of growing up with it. It's it's um, it's almost like hmm, appropriate might be the right word that one has to grow up with that line. <laughs> yeah. That one can be told that, but then one really has to learn that because we grow up, uh, at least you and I did, and, and mm-hmm. uh, other people have had this experience of growing up with Luke and Han and wanting adventure and wanting to, you know, chase the bad guys and, and blast their way out of things. And it's adventure, it's excitement. We're going to take on the bad guys, rah, 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 right? We're coming at it from this youthful perspective. And I think I kind of experienced that line the way Luke and Han did. is like, I heard it and it sounded like good old person wisdom, <laughs> right? And then I just filed it away, you know? And it's one of the movies, it's the kind of thing, that's the kind of thing that old people say all the time, right? Yeah. Uh, and then I get, older and I get more invested in the character of Obi-Wan Kenobi. And that line really hit me uh, during our um, our commentary that we did, that you and Jennifer and I did for A New Hope, uh, how much it was a Star Wars line, not only that it is, um, that it relates to just the idea of being a Jedi, that it relates to Obi-Wan Kenobi being curious, not necessarily being lightsaber first, but wanting to know what's going on behind things. It, it relates to his journey of like, hey, look, I couldn't go um, destroy the Sith uh, myself, but there was an alternative to fighting. It was watching over Luke. It was nurturing him. It's what I'm it was what I'm doing right now. Obviously, it applies, you know, uh, to how they escape the Death Star with mm-hmm. the the sneaking um, and and uh, and you know, putting on costumes and all that. But it also just really resonated with me of like, oh, this is this is what Luke is learned in the Last Jedi. He he yeah. can't go, you know, destroy the First Order with the wave of his hand. Um, he can't win that battle. Uh, but there's an alternative to fighting. It's yeah. defense. It's slowing down the first order so everyone can live to fight another day and just the fact that that one line from obi-wan kenobi you can see reflecting again and again it's in kanan's death right um you can't win but there are alternatives to fighting is everywhere in star wars and in the path of the jedi and it is all uh, you know condensed and communicated so clearly in this line yeah, and it is. Look, it's a little. It's it. It slips under the radar. It's it, there's the sun's not shining behind him. There's no. Oh, he's just saying it in in the context of the scene. I get. But even even with Luke on the Death Star and, and Return of the Jedi, throwing down the saber, an alternative to fighting, or at least what he was, uh, you know, up there to do. Uh, it just again speaks to the big Star Wars message. It's there and it's present and it's ready for you to find it when you're ready to hear it. So my number five. Exactly. Yep. Yep, a great thing uh, for somebody who uh, fought a pointless war or a war that turned out being uh, ultimately pointless (laughs) (laughs) to say. So, yeah. So that is my number five, but we're on to your number four. My number four, we're going to jump to a favorite moment in the Clone Wars animated series. I wanted to be sure to highlight that because there's so much quality Kenobi time. And I wanted to go to something that uh, highlights uh, his sense of curiosity. One of the things I've always uh, liked about his certain point of view speech, it's not just about uh, the idea of, hey, uh, we all we all cling to a specific truth. There's also like this curiosity in Obi-Wan that he wants to understand what's going on of other people because that's uh, mm. empathy. Uh, but he also wants to understand his enemies <laughs> and yeah. the situation so he can find out what the alternatives are. Or does he need to fight? And does he need to fight better? So I went to his moment of brain-warm curiosity in the Clone Wars episode Legacy 
of terror. Uh, the whole scene is great. They are trying to figure out uh, what is going to, on uh, down in these tunnels under a Geonosis. They're, they're coming across the Geonosian hive queen who's already captured Luminara on Dooley. And, and it's a real, Anakin just wants to run in and attack. And Obi-Wan comes up with a plan. He tells the uh, the clones, like, well, look, uh, they all, all these Geonosians live underground, so they must be sensitive to light. So go up on the ridges and be, be ready to turn your lamps on, <laughs> your lights on. Them. And that'll give us whatever time we need. So he's already got like a good strategic uh, plan. Uh, and once he's made that plan, and starts walking in so he can collect information to confront the, the queen. Uh, uh, Anakin says, how did you know they wouldn't just attack us? And Obi-Wan says, uh, because I make observations while you think with your lightsaber. <laughs> <laughs> not only a funny line, but just like a crisp. Like, this is the point of the curiosity. This is a, a the point of from a certain point of view of like, what are what are these creatures point of view what do they actually want because we can't actually fight them effectively unless we know what they truly truly want uh and then to finish it out it has like one of the best kenobi lines in my opinion is obi-wan's plan basically works the the queen kind of spills uh what's going on they learn that these worms are a way to for her to uh control uh mm-hmm. people's minds uh and th- one gets placed on luminara and Anakin and Luminara are like, yeah, no, take action now. Don't let this happen. <laughs> yeah. um, and Obi-Wan says, I'm curious. The more we know, the better. And both Anakin and Luminara are like, come on, come on, come on. <laughs> and Obi-Wan has this line. Come now, the nose or the ear, which do you think it will enter? <laughs> which is taking that curiosity to almost like a morbid, playful place. And I love yeah. it. So that's that's my number four. There's uh, so many wonderful things in the Clone Wars. We'll be talking about them and mentioning them. Absolutely. Of course, I am so thrilled you chose this one because that line, the the the, the side bet, the prop bet on the worms <laughs> is, is just speaks to one of the things that I think is so key to Kenobi, which is he does have a sense of humor. He is a little sassy, he's a little cheeky. He does like to flirt it up a little bit. Uh, he is the poster child for the Jedi. That, that gets said a lot. We say it a lot around here, and I think it's true, but... That somehow paints this picture of this, uh, you know, very stoic, quiet, pious man that's in the corner waiting. He's such a wonderful character in so many layers. I love this moment. It stands out. All the big meaning you're talking about, the the lesson for Anakin, whether he wants to take it or not, it ties to there are alternatives to fighting or at least know why you're fighting and know what you're going to do. I think that's also a big thing there. So uh, all wrapped up in that moment, I remember the prop bet (laughs) on the worms. So it works. It works. Love it. Yeah. Yeah, well said. And, and I think it's these kind of moments that that really make me picture, like combining with the great uh, Dexter Diner scene in Attack the Clones that like, you know, Obi-Wan does not crave action adventure. Like, ideally, he's at a bar with a drink and he's sitting next to some blowhard and, and he's like, now I kind of think you're full of it, but why do you think that? And strokes his beard and truly wants to know other people's perspectives. Yeah. Uh, sometimes to bridge the gap and other times if if their ideas are dangerous to best know how to confront them yeah yeah exactly exactly and hans over there just shooting first (laughs) exactly so that's my number four great number four uh my number four well speaking of han and cantinas and kenobi uh, like in a good bar we are going to episode four do hope and this is kenobi defending luke in the cantina Now, again, like I said, there's moments where you and I are going to talk about Kenobi, uh, the big why of Kenobi and the lessons and the lessons for us. That's what I love about the character. But I also want to go back to when I was seven or eight and just watching this old dude pull out his laser sword in a bar. (laughs) And now I look at, you know, let's not forget, you know, knowledge and defense, right? There are alternatives to fighting. All these things we're saying about Kenobi. What does he what does he try to do first? This little one's not worth the trouble. Let me get you a drink. So right away, Joseph, he's teaching me how to act in a bar. (laughs) Good or bad. And and you and I both have discussed uh, a a shared experience uh, growing up, just being terrified of bartenders or the bar atmosphere just on Luke and his treatment from Uher, Pondabafa, right? It's like something we both have dealt with. with. It's like, I don't want to go into this scary world. Yep, they will sense that I don't know how to bar correctly and they will be mean to me and at worst try to murder me. Yeah, look, if you're listening, bars aren't your things and everything, that's obviously more power to you as well. But like, I was terrified in my early 20s what it was like the time to go learn all this. I was like, but Woo Hair is grumpy and Bonda Baba does like it carried with me. And there's 
there's Kenobi for the big reason. He's obviously got the big purpose uh, at play here. This is another example of Kenobi. Like, I'm not going to strike, but if you push me on my major goal, which is to protect this one right here, I'm coming for you. The blade's coming out, and there's those big meanings. But again, going back to just being seven, eight, watching this on VHS copy, you're watching it off TV. It was one of the best action moments for me. It's so sudden. It's brutal as a kid. You're like, there's this arm and there's blood and they're screaming and howling and everything's going on. And then he just ignites the lightsaber. Cool. That's done. Let's go carry on our day. And I'm just, <laughs> whoa, I'm just blown away. So even though, you know, we can say all these things about him being the the, the, the wise old wizard and all those things. And again, the, the big quotes with big meanings. That was my first introduction into loving this character. Wow. I can go anywhere if you have a Kenobi at my side. So, mm. Yeah, no, I mean, I, I would have been thrilled if I could have taken my first steps into the larger world of bars and nightclubs with Kenobi at my side. <laughs> right, right. Like, he's just going to be in the corner talking to some uh, some other uh, person. But if I'm in trouble, he'll be like right over like, no, 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 no. That's not how you order a screwdriver. Let me help you. Um, and yeah, even <laughs> even better if I get in any sort of violent trouble. Yeah, I love everything about it. The The fact that it is just a little like, here's all this Jedi stuff that we have been talking about of trying to de-escalate. He knows it's a rough place. And of course he's like, look, come, let me get you something. And you know how clear it is that uh, these uh, people are uh, not to be uh, reasoned with, right? <laughs> That's not going to happen. And the way it's shot is what I think almost one of those, you know, the way people talk about Jaws and like, well, they couldn't show the shark as much as they wanted to. And that actually makes it cooler. Like, I almost feel like this lightsaber moment is that, right? Because it's not the modern times where we can, mm. you know, pull the camera way back. It It is and see it go through the, <laughs> the right. arm, right? That it is this this kind of flash and you can almost see it through Luke's eyes. And, and mm. we almost get to imagine the uh, elegance of it, you know, because yeah. uh, yeah. we don't fully see it. Uh, and that even makes it seem even more fast. Like, it's so fast, like we, the audience, even can't see what all happened and who he cut where <laughs> it just, yeah. it, it flashes out and it's done. And he is picking Luke up and moving on. Uh, everything about the mood of it, right? If you want to communicate that, like this is necessary to this person, not a thrill, not exciting. Right. To just de-escalation, then back to my business. I'm just, I'm going to finish the thought I was having <laughs> in between having to uh, do this unfortunate violence. Um yeah. In, in in recent times, I've really, really been interested in. It makes perfect sense in 1977 uh, that you need to show the lightsaber in action. We, we get to see Luke uh, wave it around. Right. We eventually get the fight uh, between Kenobi and Vader. Um, I feel like if A New Hope uh, came out today, it would be absolutely panned that Luke didn't have a big lightsaber fight at the end, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. he, he just waved it around once in a hut. <laughs> right. and, but on, all the, on the poster, he's holding it up. What? Like... <laughs> Uh, so I'm fascinated with the limited lightsaber use in A New Hope, and it makes total sense at the time that you need to establish how it works. Uh, seeing that that bloody but cauterized arm is what allows you to understand what happens to Kenobi isn't normal uh, yeah. at the end. But I'm fascinated with it now as like, what a choice. If he's been going years without like, I'm trying not to use my lightsaber in public. Yeah. It, it's just total headcanon. But for me, the headcanon is... Hey, look, uh, Leia's involved in the rebellion. She was coming to me. I heard about what happened on Scarif. Luke is here. The time has come. The Jedi are back. My days are limited. No matter what, uh, you, I'm going to let the galaxy see a lightsaber again. Yeah, absolutely. Love I agree with that because it is uh, it's a fun thing to wonder. Like, hey, he just uh, he just has that thing out there doing it, doing what he needs to do. And uh, I, you know, we're, I no doubt we're going to see it in Kenobi where we see the lightsaber outside of any big duel is, is a question I have. I, I think whatever happens that you could, you could figure out the, the why of it. But yeah, I, I agree with you. This it, it's like game on game on. We're not messing around. Anymore. <laughs> Normally yeah. I try to keep talking with you. You got your blaster out. You know, we, you're not tripping me up here right now. Nope. Nope. He has a mission and it's helping Ooh. Luke. Uh, that's a great one. So that's my number four. We're not done helping Luke. What is your number three? My number three is another moment of helping Luke. Uh, this is a scene that you and I have talked about a lot. I'm sure we will talk a lot about it in this very podcast. It is hard to ignore. It's from the great Obi-Wan scene in Rebels, Twin Sons. I think that uh, whole episode is rewarding as you're watching Rebels, but it's also really rewarding 
uh, to just watch as an Obi-Wan Kenobi fan. Uh, we've been talking a lot about, I think, the Kenobi show is about how does he get to be the Kenobi in A New Hope, but in particular, also the Kenobi in this scene in Rebels, because it is so much about how he has found peace and purpose in watching over Luke and this sense that he is on the right path. Um, we've talked about this a lot, so I just really want to focus on the moment uh, that mm. uh, uh, that really grabs me. There are many, <laughs> yeah. but the way it is constructed that he tells um, he tells Ezra, right? Like, I it, it's time to heal this old wound. It's so clear he has no malice. He has no desire to fight with Maul. Not even a hint of vengeance in his heart. Uh, and he's really, and Maul's trying to, you know, uh, uh, hurt him, you know, trying to, to attack him verbally. And there's clear that there's not going to be any de-escalation uh, possible. But the moment that I really go to is when Maul does have some insight, right? Of like, why are you here? You're protecting something. No, someone. And the lightsaber comes on. And it's almost as thrilling to me as Luke catching uh, and igniting his green blade in Return of the Jedi. It's one of those, and the Jedi shall rise moment, you know, of like absolute, uh, this is the absolute synthesis uh, of knowledge and defense. Obi-Wan knows what he is there for. It is not about malice. He has, he would happily let Maul live and let live, right? Um but it is defense. He is here for a purpose. It is to defend Luke. And as soon as Maul says someone, it's the, this is what I have to do. Defend. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm. I love how you're describing this tiny moment, just being so big. And I think, I think everyone, this, this moment, this episode is, is the uh, twin sons is talked about as it should be. I, I think everyone gets, it's not one of those moments in Star Wars where you're like, well, some people might've missed me. It's so <laughs> clear. It's so good. It's so disgusted. It's so powerful, but it continues. It's why it's become like, I, I, I don't know if I, it's maybe a top five scene, like sequence in Star Wars for me. Mm -hmm. I love it. And you're breaking it down. Yeah. We're certainly not, not done talking about it, but you're breaking it down to this wonderful moment. What a hero's journey for Kenobi, a lifetime of a journey to this moment, to this purpose for me, uh, is, is how I see it. He's ignited it because this is uh, this is what he needs to do. And, and then I wonder, too, have you ever have you ever gone over your head some headcanon of if Maul never mentions that? Does, does Kenobi just have a sit down with him until it's, it's morning and it's time to go <laughs> like. Is Maul going to make the, make the first move? Does he just finally lose patience and strike? Maybe. I don't know. But I just love that Kenobi was sitting back. And I don't think at any any thought, I'm going to take that blade out. And, you know, obviously, you know, something, something might happen. But you know what I mean? Like, it's that moment. It's the hero's call right there for him. Yeah, I think there's, you know, I, I don't know the practical, you know, uh, it, it's a real fun what if. If Maul is like, okay, I'm not going to attack you, but I'm just going to let you know. He doesn't, he, Maul doesn't stumble on Luke at all. He's like, okay, I'm not going to attack you, Obi-Wan, but I'm going to go kill Ezra, right? Yeah. Would maybe Obi-Wan would have uh, risen in defense then. Uh, we don't know, right? But yeah. I think the vibe for me is like Obi-Wan's like, I am absolutely certain of who I am, why I am here. Maul, you're doing your own thing. I can't influence your choices. I'll talk nice to you, you know, and if you'd want to sit down and have a campfire chat, that'd be great. Uh, but it's not up to me. It's up to you, Maul. Um, I am only responding to your choice and only responding to a very specific choice to mm -hmm. uh, threaten uh, the, the person I'm committed to defending. It's just so pure. It's just like, it's, he's not, he's not hunting them all out. He's not like, I got to put him down finally, you know, it's yeah. total defense. I agree. Yeah. Wonderful, wonderful stuff. Yeah. It, it, again, it, it's, it, it's Kenobi basically saying to them all, let me get you a drink. No, nope. okay. it is. It okay. is. And it's just so like, uh, Yeah. You haven't changed at all. Bummer. Okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, we, uh, we could have been friends. Yeah. No, <laughs> no, yeah no, that's my me. number three. Great. Number three. Great big moment. Uh, a, a small, almost intimate moment uh, that is so big and so important with the lightsaber weapon uh, that we all love, collect, celebrate, but there's great meaning behind it all. Uh, great choice. Of number three. My number three is, uh, is a fight. We got to fight with Kenobi. And this is going to attack the clones and him confronting Django Fett. I'm kind of mm. cheating here, Joseph, and putting 
pretty much the whole thing in there, right? <laughs> pretty much the whole thing. And what I love about this, especially 20 years on from Attack the Clones, everyone knows this is this film has this 1950s film noir vibe, and Kenobi's at the center of that, including uh, going on going to the diner. He's a gumshoe on the case. All these kind of things. I love, and you know, Attack of the Clones has a lot of the themes, and, and the, the choices are dark, cloudy, rainy, whatever, whatever you want to say. But the rain on Camino, them out fighting in the rain. It, I feel like I'm watching a 1950s gangster picture or something, where the local <laughs> tech is challenged, you know, and they're and Johnny, I'll get you. And they're out in the rain, and and uh, you know, the rain is falling, the fight is going on, and and you know, you could argue, that I don't even know if Kenobi wins this fight or or he survives. Obviously, and he tracks him and all those kind of things. And I just, I just love it. I love it. Uh, I love Kenobi at this point. It's kind of Kenobi firing all cylinders. It's peak Jedi Knight Kenobi, uh, though we're going to get some great stuff, obviously, in the Clone Wars uh, series and everything. Uh, and I just love from the quiet confrontation uh, to two uh, two individuals who aren't saying a lot, but the subtext is saying everything in, in uh, Django's uh, quarters. Even Boba looking at it, Boba being upset. Get him, Dad, all that stuff. It's just a fun sequence that sometimes, and I always t- talk about the seismic charges. I love it. It's one of my favorite sounds. Blah, blah, blah. It's it's the whole sequence. I love going to that sequence. I love the fight. I love the slow pacing. I love then the fight in the rain. And then I love the uh, the chase uh, in the asteroid field uh, with those beloved seismic charges. It is just Kenobi out on the street. He's street level, <laughs> and he's got to get the job done. So you're talking about all of it. You're talking about the uh, the battle in Django's room of it, just entire subtext and uh, drilling eyes, yeah. <laughs> and then the actual fight in the rain, and then the asteroid battle too. You're putting it all in. I'm cheating and putting the entire thing in because it just I love I love the I love the sounds. I love the the design. I love. Django maybe thinking he's got to get away with him, but then they just got this guy doesn't take a hand. It's total. It's a total 1950s film noir gangster picture to me. It's it's everything I love about this film uh, uh, in, 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 in a fun sequence. And again, when, it, when I was more challenged in the film, this was one of the this was some of the stuff I'd go to. Yeah, but the Django fight was cool. Yeah, the seismic charge was cool. Uh, and it is Kenobi as maybe I wanted to to see him. Um, and it's not about lightsaber out, big, powerful Jedi, right? It's just, mm-hmm. it's, it's, it's a Jedi out in the galaxy doing his thing. So for me, when I think of favorite Kenobi moments, yes, yeah, so this is several moments tied together, <laughs> but it's like, this is what I want to sit down and watch. Thinking about, yeah. I want to go to this. Yeah. I just for the anniversary uh, rewatched uh, Attack of the Clones in a real like I'm not taking notes. I'm not doing this for a podcast. I'm doing this because I love this film and it's the 20th anniversary. Uh, yeah. And it was so great to just uh, luxuriate in these scenes on the the big screen of my television. Um, yeah. yeah, and there's so many beats within it I like, but the whole overall picture is you know. Phantom Menace comes out, and I really like this impetuous young man who is eager to prove himself, and his lightsaber fight with Maul is so cool, and he has a victory, and uh, it's great. Uh, but then this is just the, like, hey, I'm older, I'm confident, um, and not, I'm not particularly thrilled by any of this, but this is what I gotta do. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that whole vibe comes across. He's de- he's he, There's a, definitely that steel and that confrontation of, like, you know, eager to see, you know, how they, how you're see your clones in battle and uh yeah. Django like oh they'll do their job like that that's all great <laughs> and then i mean remembering that like what yoda says to him is pretty harsh he reports uh you know to the old folks home <laughs> yeah. scramble code 5 and yoda's like bring that bounty hunter here <laughs> yeah. Yeah. like he's a naughty kid who needs to be picked up from work cuz he got or from school you know cuz he got in trouble uh, yeah. at lunch uh for throwing his food the yoda's just like Get that guy and bring him here. So, like, no, Kenobi does not entirely succeed. Uh, Django puts him through his paces, right? Yeah. Loses his saber. Uh, yeah. All the kicks back and forth. It's so cool. And one of my favorite moments in that fight is when Kenobi delivers that flying kick a- after uh, Django has his arms tied up in his rope. And Kenobi realizes what he's done a second too late. I'm like, oh, not good. <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. Yeah. I love yeah, that. that individual moment is great. And then, yeah, the the whole, uh, you know, the this is why I hate flying mm-hmm. combined with the seismic charges combined with yet another uh, 
hey, can't win, but there are alternatives to fighting with, uh, you know, ejecting this, the spare parts canisters and hiding, you know, it's all so Obi-Wan and it's all just, I am on a mission to find the truth and this guy's in my way. Yeah. And that's what I'm doing here today. And that's it. That's, that's how I'm punching. <laughs> I punched into work and this is my assignment and I'm doing it. <laughs> the rain was falling, you see, and I was out on the case. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Right. Uh, so there you go. I'm putting it all in as my number three. Obi Wan confronts Django, and the fight happens. Uh, what is uh, your number two, sir? Uh, my number two have so many moments where I am absolutely uh, celebrating uh, the wisdom of Kenobi, uh, the snark of Kenobi, uh, the charm of Kenobi, the defense, the mentorship of Kenobi. I wanted to highlight one of the great moments of Kenobi pain. <laughs> uh, I almost put, I have the high ground because I've always liked that. Uh, people were challenged by that when it came out. I think they probably still are today. Some people, uh, but I was like, no, no, if I'm honest, the Kenobi moment that is most powerful is he's defeated Anakin. He did not want to do that. It is horrific and he normally contains his emotions and the battle's done and he just breaks, right? Yeah. Like he yells at, uh, at Anakin up on the platform, uh, you know, uh, democracy, you know, my yeah. uh, loyalty is democracy is, is powerful. Uh, but that's kind of a back and forth. This is the, like, he could just walk away now. Right. Mm -hmm. But he has to let it out. You know, and we've been talking about the the Brotherhood book and lots of great scenes in the Clone Wars animated series, kind of debating how much Kenobi should have tried to connect with Anakin on a more emotional level and open up and see if they could have those harder conversations. And it and it feels like this is just an eruption of all those moments where where Obi Wan was like, maybe I should talk to him, maybe I shouldn't, maybe it'll upset him. You know what? It'll be fine. He's the chosen one. I trust him. It's all going to work out. He's got a good heart. And like all of the pain of, I, I was wrong. Mm. I failed. Uh, just explodes. He doesn't need to say this, right? It's yeah. that he, it's boiling up inside him. So my number two is you were the chosen one. It was said that you would destroy the Sith, not join them, bring balance to the force, not leave it in darkness. It's a great Kenobi moment because you feel his pain, but it also just drives home the stakes yeah. of this of this trilogy, of the prequel trilogy, that it isn't, ah, one team won, another team lost. The whole galaxy, the force itself, is left in darkness. And the power with which that's delivered, uh, this is my investment in Star Wars talking too, but, but I always just feel like Obi-Wan is like, he feels it like mm. the force feels different now. It's rotted when he reaches out to it. He's going to find he's going to connect to the light again, but it's not as easy because everything is just in darkness and, and the pain of that. The explosion, the delivery makes it one of the best Kenobi moments for me. Well said, uh, well said. And one of the things I just love about it is that whole that 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 whole chunk of it, even even from I have the high ground and make all your jokes you want. I still love that. I'm good with that. And that whole sequence. But this line, these moments, you're my brother, all those things. I'm convinced. And this is a very general sweeping statement. Joseph. I'm convinced that when people are like, oh, I don't like the prequels, but you and you and was pretty good. I think this is what pops in their brain. Oh, not that, yeah. yeah, not that the other moments aren't great or he doesn't have these wonderful moments. Uh, you know, I'm sure they're all thinking about Dexter's Diner like I am, too. But this is it, 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 because it is the Oscar clip almost. It, I, I guess you want to look at it like that. But I think you're right. It's everyone feels it. If you're a Star Wars fan, you connect with the pain. You connect with the um, the failure and, and the and, and the horror. And, and you're right. We know there's a big mirror probably up to Kenobi in a lot of this. Of, of how did he let it get here, what he could have done. But that's when you take the deeper dive. But you can just go with the emotions on this scene. Standing on the fiery shores of Mustafar, something we've been waiting years to get to if you uh, you know were a fan from the 80s and read that novel. And now here we get it. And um, yeah, it isn't a, it is a moment of victory at all. It is pure, uh, pure emotion, which we know Jedis do experience. <laughs> and it's everything. And I think it's, uh, it's McGregor's... Uh, I don't even want, I don't know if it's fair to say finest moments Kenobi, but it's again, it's the one. I think people think of this a lot. 
Yeah, there's so many great ones. The, the uh, I have failed you earlier is great. Mm-hmm. The, you know, uh, I will do what I must is great. Yes. All, everything's great. I, I could list every line. I think they're all great. Uh, but this one is so powerful. And I do have the the strong memories of it being in the trailer. And I had friends uh, who had grown up the original trilogy like me who did not like the prequels, uh, it didn't even try to hold out any love for them and were snarking to me about like, well, I'm not even going to see it. Like, okay, cool, whatever. And then the trailer came out <laughs> and then like hey did you see that trailer where obi-wan is screaming you were the chosen one he's like yeah he's like it got me i'm gonna see the movie <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah 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 i rem- i have such memories of multiple friends going ah, all right i'm gonna see the movie because of that moment in the trailer which for me is what i'll take i will take that one moment if that's gonna bring you back uh always keep your heart open to the new star wars that comes down the line there so yeah great exactly stuff. So that's my number two. That's a big number two. That's a big number two. And you could have <laughs> cheated like me, Joseph. You could have just said all of Mustafar, uh, which is the fight, everything about it. But, you, you know, you kept the uh, the task and, and picked uh, this one great moment because I am kind of cheating again, I think. Um, I was debating a little bit late last night on what I want to what I want to put it. And, and when you're trying to make these Star Wars rank lists, you can kind of pull back a little bit. Just just almost like a quick like an improv exercise. Kenobi, what pops to mind? Mm hmm. This came to mind, and it is the entire short story, Master and Apprentice, not to be confused with the later uh, novel there, but Master and Apprentice from a certain point of view by Claudia Gray, and just it's him conversing with Qui Gon in this moment as uh, you got the uh, Luke has run off to to the go to the homestead to see um, and learn the horrors of of what's happened to Uncle Owen and, and Amperu. You got the droids and the Jawa bodies, everything like that. That sequence, Qui Gon. Um, visits, visits him and look, it's a great moment for Qui-Gon. It's so much insight, but it's the overall vibe of, of purpose. This is the call. This is what's happening. Kenobi's very aware. The sister was trying to reach the brother. This might happen. And he's got a little bit of fear. And he also has this thought of, 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 um, I kind of almost don't want to let it go. And that's kind of the big thing about this. Actually, the final line is Qui-Gon um, you know, talking about uh, this, this is about uh, Obi-Wan having to let go of this life in these 20 years. And we're about to get a lot of answers. We're about to experience this wonderful series that's going to take us through um, a lot of Kenobi's mind during this time. And and these books, these stories, I should say, and, and from a certain point of view are canon, but some of them, you know, there's, there, you know, this canon adjacent, soft canon, whatever you want to say, that's kind of been the vibe. But I remember this book came out. It was like, no, no, here, you know, we, I think we kind of treated it as canon. And, I, and I, I do, but my point is, it's not whether it's canon or not. I just, I just wonder not how they're going to connect. I'm just, I want to see so much more of Kenobi's mindset and then, and go back and read this story and see kind of where it ends up about this long 20 year journey is coming to a close. This chapter is coming to a close, including the uh, the mall stuff and 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 what we're about to learn and, and the quizzes, all that. And it's time to go. And I and, and I almost know. I don't know if I'm ready to. I don't know if I even want to at this point. I don't know. There's a lot of stuff going on, and it's almost a, it's a somber story, especially with Qui Gon. The Force goes Qui Gon, kind of knowing what's happening, but knowing he's not going to say. There's that great exchange at the end of the story of of uh, I'll see you soon type of thing, and Kenobi's like, yeah, yeah, I'll give you a call, and Qui Gon. <laughs> It is brain like, that's not what I mean, but I can't tell him he's going to find out the truth will be revealed as it always is, uh, always, always does. Um, uh, so, uh, man, I just I just love it. It's the vibe. It's it's Claudia Gray uh, setting up for what we get. You know, it's basically her saying, hey, let me write these characters, too. Um, and I just love it. And I just I just remember the feeling of reading it the first time. And I read it again this morning and just love just love everything about it. So it's one of my great Kenobi moments. We could say the moment is Kenobi letting go of everything so far to complete this mission. Yeah. I, I have not reread that one in, in a long time, but I remember being blown away by it and I'm going to make time. Mm. Uh, maybe I'll read it over lunch today. <laughs> uh, Cause I remember loving it. I remember loving uh, the description of, you know, Obi-Wan taking this beat for himself, knowing that Luke is going to confront this truth that his yeah. parents are already gone, right? Or his, his adopted parents uh, are mm. already gone. His uncle uh, and aunt are gone. And, Obi-Wan taking this moment 
for himself, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I think that's really what it's about of like, um, Obi-Wan is the mentor figure. And we were talking early on about like how we it, growing up with the films even kind of processed it that way of like, mm -hmm. Hey, we're Luke and Han and Leia, or maybe you're identify with 3PO and, and Obi-Wan's this mentor, right? He's kind of got all these deep old person thoughts, right? <laughs> but the, the growing story of Obi-Wan is like, everybody has a story, right? And he yeah. knows his role is to be the mentor. And I always felt like this story was kind of him centering and kind of taking this moment for himself, uh, mm -hmm. still needing the guidance of his own mentor. And, yeah. you know, calling to Qui-Gon, the great description of Qui-Gon kind of having to reform himself within the Force so he could be there for Obi-Wan. And it really is about Obi-Wan saying, like, uh, I, I think I've reached this pinnacle in, in my story. Uh, and my story is about sacrifice it's about being there for luke that's my mission uh but it's still but that's still my story and i need to process my life and my story and here's my mentor uh to help me process you know mentors mm -hmm. have stories too even if their story is to help with somebody else's story and it's like him dealing with that absolutely i love the you frame it as just like almost a taking the deep breath before the the final push here, and and, and giving a, a moment for himself, and 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 I love and I love this because it's very real. Yeah, it's is very real. It is very uh, you know teachers are people too <laughs> type of uh, <laughs> thought that it's not just so simple as uh, yeah yeah I've been out here twenty years protect the kid protect the kid cool all right I might die we'll see we'll figure out that he would have some thoughts that he would look at his life here probably look at it, uh, memories of uh, you know Rue the EOP and uh, drinking <laughs> at bars and. All those things. Uh, so uh, is he ready to become a Jedi Knight again for this final push? And that's the question. It's fair to ask. And he's got to let go and, and reach those goals. So there you go. My number two, conversing with Qui-Gon, Master and Apprentice story from a certain point of view. Thanks, Claudia Gray. That's a good one. Yeah, that's a great choice. All right. From there, we are going to take a quick break. We got honorable mentions. Oh, you know we do. And then our number one choice for our favorite Obi-Wan Kenobi moment. Stick around here to Star Wars Ranked. Welcome back to Star Wars Ranked. Me, Ken Napsack, and Joseph Scrimshaw are sitting down to talk a little Obi-Wan Kenobi as we look on the life and times of the poster child for the Jedi Order, which is even not fair to say to him. That's a lot of, that's a big burden to put on him. <laughs> uh, but he's one of our favorite characters. We have a lot of fun discussing our favorite moments with him. But as always, we have some honorable mentions, things that almost made our list. Joseph, uh, take me through a couple and uh, I'll take you through, I'll try to keep my list to under 30. <laughs> uh, me as well I, I will be honest a couple more have snuck in since i sent you my list um uh i'm gonna bundle up three just fun snarky jokey lines because that is one of the really fun things about him is all through his uh career <laughs> he's got some uh sometimes kind of wistful eye-rolling snark and sometimes some uh, quite pointed snark, uh, starting with his uh, first appearance in the film Star Wars, Later A New Hope. Uh, mm -hmm. We we quote it often, but when, uh, <laughs> when Han asked him, like, you haven't heard of the Millennium Falcon in the, should I have? It's <laughs> it's on the page. It's just a, like, pretty, like, well, yeah, no, how, 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 why would I have heard of that? But the way it's delivered is so, like, uh, that wise old snarky mentor going like, okay, I can see you're going to be a problem because you are absolutely full of yourself. So I will deflate you just a little. <laughs> oh, I love that. Oh God. It's one of my favorite, uh, Alec Guinness moment. It's just, it's yeah. so, so his read on it. Great stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And then in, in the snark that tips over into, uh, a grumpy where <laughs> he's maybe not being the best Jedi, uh, when, uh, Anakin shows up in the Geonosis, Geonosian arena, Petronaki arena. Uh, and he's kind of got that sheepdog look of like, well, you know, we decided to come rescue master and his, uh, Obi-Wan's eyes flick up to his, his uh, <laughs> shackles and says, good job. <laughs> <laughs> it's so great and then the final one uh, this is a little bit more quiet a little bit more to himself but i love it and i think about it all the time uh in revenge of the sith uh early on when he and anakin are still working well together and they're in the elevator and uh and anakin cuts the hole and leaps out and obi-wan says just to himself always on the move <laughs> It's another one of those great, like Obi-Wan is much more happy to keep it at a steady 60 miles an hour and that will solve everything, you know? Love it. Love it. Yeah. So there's some uh, moments of snark. Uh, another one I wanted to stick in, sneak in is just the general 
victory at the Outlander Club. There's so many great moments, but just the whole way that he handles the the end of that pursuit uh, with Sam Wessel. This is another uh, quiet, calm, steady victory moment of, hey, uh, I I know the situation. Uh, Anakin's informed me uh, she's a changeling. She probably thinks that she has the drop on us. So I'm going to make the most of that. I'm going to make myself uh, a target. We get the funny moment with the Elon Slays Vegano. We get a, a great vision of Obi-Wan drinking bright blue alcohol of some kind. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, it, it is the, it's the callback to no, New Hope, but I don't mind at all. But it is the, the, the fast, the speed, the angle of, you know, mm-hmm. the cut when he takes out, uh, takes off her hand. The whole thing is just, uh, I love the Outlander Club scene. And in particular, uh, Obi-Wan's tactics in victory in that moment. I absolutely love it. I absolutely love the Outlander Club overall. In fact, I was roaming around uh, Star Wars uh, Lego, the so- Skywalker Saga and Outlander Club the other day, uh, having fun. So love that sequence. And, and uh, yeah, again, we you, no secret, you and I love Kenobi and bars. Yep. <laughs> uh, I'll do one more and then I'll pitch it back sure. to you. Uh, a big. This is a big moment for me. It's also a, a moment of emotion, but it's, uh, to me, like one of the key Kenobi moments where it is a truth that you can infer from almost all of what Kenobi does, but he just says it. And it is in uh, the brutal episode, The Lawless. Uh, Maul is torturing him uh, emotionally and expecting him to break because that's the way Maul thinks life works. And Kenobi has this defiant moment where he says to Maul, you can kill me, but you will never destroy me. It takes strength to resist the dark side. Only the weak embrace it. Uh, Maul says it's more powerful than you know. And Kenobi says, and those who oppose it are more powerful than you'll ever be. Mm -hmm. And, it's one of those it's one of those long view moments that Kenobi has. It, it ties back to, you know, you can't win of like, yep, you have me at your mercy. You can hurt me emotionally. You can probably cut my head off and I can't stop it now. Uh, but you won't have any victory because that's not what the dark side is. You know, it, you'll you, you won't be satisfied and you'll just want more. It'll be an empty victory for for you. And for me, the victory that I want is to stay true to myself and resist the dark side to have him actually say it right of saying like yeah no i didn't uh this isn't a a video game i didn't you know (laughs) build my profile and hit the light side button yeah i do this every day and it takes strength it's taking horrific strength in this situation now not to give in to the dark side and that's why i do it because i'm not weak it's so powerful i absolutely love it uh, absolutely. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm glad we, we, we knew we were going to mention something there, but, uh, it's, um, it's important to put, put the one and it is, uh, I mean, it's such a, it's a serious moment, it's a serious line. So I'm not saying this in, in any kind of like jokey way, but it, it is kind of this very powerful, badass, sick burn at the end. I'm, do what you're going to do. Do what you think going to, you're not breaking me here. And, and yeah. So much of the Clone Wars series, you and I have been doing the Clone Wars report, literally, literally scenes of Kenobi taking beatings. The idea <laughs> of him, you know, so many people trying to break him and his one kind of, uh, you know, mission, if you will, is to never break. I can't break. Uh, that's not what I do. It's not what I, I, I want to do. It's not what the Jedi does. And, and it all leads up to this. So it's, it's great. Powerful. Yeah, absolutely great. So I uh, wanted to be sure to include that and pitch it back to you. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you, sir. Uh, my honorable mentions, uh, yeah, well, all right, I'll, I'll contain myself here. I do want to go to A New Hope, and this is one that I've loved uh, as a kid. I still love now. I think it's slightly underrated. It is him using a little force trick, a little sound force trick to, to, to distract and trick the stormtroopers by the tractor beam. So they're talking mm-hmm. about their day at work. Is this another drill? Is this the TC-50? And he does the little click and, you know, again, there's big philosophies about what it means to be a Jedi and uh, big discussions, uh, philosophical discussions on what, how to use your power, what kind of power, all those things that stores, Star Wars dives into. But uh, I'm a kid. I'm watching this and I'm like, can I do this? How can I get this skill? I would love to f- throw sound and distract. <laughs> I would love to be a, a space wizard that does this. I was just captivated by that as a kid and even the little look like on his face like he's it, it, clink. all right cool i'm good i'm out of here love it <laughs> love it he, yeah and he, he throws it like his finger has the power of ventriloquism yes. right like and, and it's really interesting to think is like did he did he throw a noise or did like was there like a panel he knocked off right yeah because <laughs> he doesn't yeah. have that little point uh 
Mm. And it, this is one of those details that I studied for trivia, but I, I just like, so I've remembered of like, what, what I think it is. And I think uh, it must be some outgassing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I uh, love the idea of Kenobi's like, yeah, I know it'll fool these fools. <laughs> the sound of outgassing. Dink. Dink. Uh, so love that one there. Uh, of course, we're going to mention Dexter. Dexter's died in that whole sequence. Um, we love that. We love what it means. Uh, and, and you and I and a lot of other people, to be clear, Dex is having his day in his son right now. But we, we a lot of people just love this scene. Uh, almost to the point where I, I just, I think Dex took so much uh, uh, crap from uh, so many parts of the fandom that eventually I just wanted to stand up and stand with him. Like, you ain't, <laughs> you come for Dex, you come for me. So I wanted to include something from the scene and sequence. But it's Kenobi walking in and, and just sharing that hug with Dex. It's just... All pants falling down, arms grabbing them, just this big. <laughs> ah. It's so much the spirit of their relationship. It's so much at the core. And, and it's Kenobi. Again, This we can talk about the deep stuff of the intersection of knowledge and wisdom, what that scene is about. But it is a Jedi out on the street. It is a Jedi. Just this is how Kenobi functions. And now we know a little bit more of the detail of eh, the, the Jedi temple food wasn't that great. So I went out to my old friend Dex's diner and, and you know. I'd met him years ago, but now he serves the six layer cake. I love the food. All those are wonderful details. But it, 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 to me, you can tell all those details all go to this walking in the warm greeting and the big hug for, with Dex. I just love that. Yeah. It, it, we've talked about that scene, you know, a decent amount. And one of the things that I do really love about it is it is pulling uh, from noir to traditions. It, it is really uh, Raymond Chandler, Philip Marlowe, who knows what's really going on with well, the people on the street, the people with their life experiences and in, in their ears to the ground that other people, uh, you know, don't pay attention to. Um, so it easily could have just been like, hey, I got an informant, you know? Yeah. But what makes it special is they're pals, they're buddies. And it tells us so much about Obi-Wan Kenobi, that big smile on his face, mm -hmm. that he's here for information in this noir detective way. But he, this is a, an establishment he frequents. This guy is his buddy. That tells us so much about who Obi-Wan Kenobi is yeah. and how he would like to spend his non, you know, yeah. on a mission time. Yeah, absolutely. Well said. Well said. Um, uh, couple for me here and i'll kick it back to you here uh attack attack the uh sorry, i think oh not attack the clones revenge of the sith um my notes are wrong there um you you talked a lot about the, the confrontation with grievous and everything i just love the little moment and it speaks a lot of kenobi's connection with the organic connection with the living all those kind of cool deeper themes but i gotta say whistling and riding off on boga the veractal pretty <laughs> damn cool where did he learn that? Did this creature already know how to do this? Uh, had he practiced before? Did he just assume? I don't know. I don't care. It's Star Wars. The action's great. A whistle and a ride. Uh, I absolutely love Kenobi in that moment. Uh, I'm so glad that you included this because it is, particularly once he gets in the chase with Grievous with the wheel bike, it is organic versus uh, mechanical, which is obviously pretty present in the fight with Grievous and, you know, the character who dies because his organ sack <laughs> gets yeah. exposed. Um, yeah. yeah, so I've always loved uh, Bogus of Rackdoll and the noises. And yeah, for a long time, we didn't know. It was just like, oh, he's just he's just good at this. But uh, there's, that, there's a great stuff in the Master and Apprentice novel Mm -hmm. where he learns to ride uh, Vractals and enjoy it. So he's a pro at this point. He is. He is. No, good. Yeah, good pull on that. I forgot that little detail. Um, a final one for me. Uh, well, I have a couple more, but I'll kick it back to you here, sir. Uh, uh, going back to the From a Certain Point of View uh, collection of stories, we do love uh, all of them. Some of them are a little uh, wilder and all those kind of things. We've had those discussions elsewhere. But so many great Kenobi moments in these books. So many great Yoda ones. And I love Kenobi. And that, and that one story with Yoda, asking Yoda to train Luke over Leia and the debate they had. And, and I never really thought about that as much. And it ties to, no, there is another and all those kind of things. And it, and it makes sure to bring Leia more into that part of the story and acknowledge Leia's true purpose and her true power and her true abilities and what could be. And I love the debate. And I love that there is could be a right, could be a wrong, could be a different past. We never would have known. Big what if. I don't know. I just love it. I love Kenobi's commitment to his belief, uh, despite all the maybe red flags with Luke, uh, you know, and uh, I get all that. Is, is he more Anakin than Padme? Probably. Uh, chip off the old block, if you will. So I just I just think about that a moment a lot because I just didn't grow up. You know, you just grow up, at, you know, they're all on the same team, right? They're buddies. They fight for team force. So they're not going to, they're all, <laughs> all in agreement. They got the playbook. All right, Luke's, Luke's this, this. No, I love that they had this debate and, um, 
and the Kenobi, uh, it, it, it's a risk. He's putting his, uh, putting his force ghost name on the line there. Yeah, no, I really love that detail too. I, we, we've talked a lot about it from the perspective of Yoda, of course, Yoda being like, Oh, a, a Jedi needs to have, you know, compassion, but also the most serious mind. Uh, come on, Leia. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it makes a lot of sense. And then in contrast, you know, there's even been those memes of like, you know, Leia at nine or 10 years old is like learning diplomacy and how to, you know, <laughs> field strip a blaster and Luke's like, vroom, vroom, vroom. I have a toy starship. You're like, which one of these? people are going to save the galaxy uh answer <laughs> both uh really funny but also like it's just uh, it's just touching for obi-wan to be like i've been looking over him and yep 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 he's got this checklist of anakin like traits but you know anakin had heart too and i see that heart in luke so come mm -hmm. on it's really it's really touching yeah love that there all right a couple more on your list sir yeah so uh also uh, speaking of which uh, uh, i wanted to do a shout out to that Great Kevin Scott short story, Time of Death, which is also in the uh, A New Hope from a Certain Point of View book. Uh, it's a lot of great moments. It's basically a best of Kenobi moments because it's Kenobi at his moment of death, kind of fracturing through time as he enters the Force and thinking about lots of things. But one of those is that detail that he uh, carved little toy starships for Luke. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. And that's where that's a, we, we mentioned that detail a lot. I forget it's from that story. Yeah, yeah. So that's another one I got to reread over lunch. As mm -hmm. It's a really good one. I wanted to shout that out. Uh, the, my final runner up is uh, a, kind of a combo. It's the uh, the fun version of it and the deep version of it at the same time. And that is uh, Obi-Wan Kenobi being Mr. Certain Point of View. Uh, mm -hmm. I love the moment, the entire scene in Return of the Jedi uh, with the uh, the go sit log chat um, mm -hmm. where Obi-Wan can really, it feels almost like he's, he's still being a mentor, right? But Luke has passed so many trials and had so many discoveries it's where like kenobi can really be totally almost like direct with him almost like peer like uh he's still a mentor uh but you know the whole the whole sort of what i told you was true from a certain point of view luke's umbrage fans umbrage <laughs> yeah yeah uh but i always think of it in this kenobi tv show might give us a, a a different point of view on a certain point of view but that idea, like, it is really true for him. It was it was what he thought was best to tell Luke. Uh, and it is also true from uh, Obi-Wan's point of view. It's not just being uh, playful and cheeky uh, or, or, you know, a dubious half, half liar. Uh, to me, it is about, like, the good man who was your father, Anakin, is gone. He was consumed by vader um and so what i told you was true from a certain point of view i love that idea i love that commitment to trying to understand different people's perspective and knowing that that's uh that's a reality of how how we function that there uh, there are things that there are obje objective truths but the way that we interact with the world is often based on our our uh personal relationships our subjective relationships to these objective truths such a vital and important piece of information and I'm pairing that with another great moment from the Clone Wars animated series uh, of sparring with Satine in the episode of Voyage of Temptation, where that that debate that is spurred a lot from the line from a certain point of view and Obi-Wan's choice to, to tell Luke uh, part of the story, the story from his point of view. For many years, fans are like, wait, Obi-Wan's kind of a jerk, right? And I think we get that dealt with in this conversation uh, with Satine, where Satine says, Senators... I presume you're acquainted acquainted with the collection of half truths and hyperbole known as Obi Wan Kenobi. Oh, <laughs> Obi Wan responds, "Your Highness is too kind," and Satine says, "You're right, I am." <laughs> it's just, it's just great old school, you know, old film snark banter between two people who deeply know each other, deeply care about each other, and kind of know one another's uh, flaws. Uh, but I, I really love it because I think it kind of says like yeah no obi-wan is um he is someone who is like a uh, very thoughtful there's a great there's a great um moment in that kenobi novel the legends one that i was reviewing at the top where kenobi's trying to play everything uh just very subtle not tell any don't tell too much and the person he's spending a lot of time with is like you you talk in like parables <laughs> all the time it's just like that is a truth of his character where he is he's he's thinking about um what is what is the what is the true way to say this and sometimes to other people it comes out as uh that's a half truth and then it's an interesting conversation him go is it 
let's debate more. I just love that part of uh, his character and the way it's been examined from a critical point of view and from a fun point of view. Yeah. Ah, well said. Now, yeah, you could, you could fill, um, you could fill a lot of lists with Satine and, and Obi-Wan moments. It's, it's why it's so, they're such a popular ship in Star Wars, right? Uh, yeah. That, that's, uh, and, and I think still so much more to explore, uh, whether it be a story set in that time that they were on the run or any more content. And, you know, love seeing a little bit more of it in, um, uh, brotherhood as well so and, but 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 i think other than the big picture and the tragedy the big sweeping space opera opera tragedy i really think it works because of the moments you're talking about uh beyond just uh rom-com banter it's just that they know each other and that it's a different side kenobi and she doesn't so it's so good it's pitch perfect yeah it is absolutely great and and it's great that this uh sick burn on obi-wan kenobi is delivered by somebody who truly loves him who sees his flaws and all of his wonderful qualities and loves him so that's uh my honorable mentions all right uh that is uh almost good here a couple more for me uh i was gonna toss out there i do love uh him yelling uh patience to luke and empire strikes back as force <laughs> ghost love the urgency there gotta mention sith lords are our speciality and you can make Ooh. all the jokes you want because i love that i love the jokes about that line uh and do a smash cut of all uh perceived failings of them and sith lords but i just kind of love it. it's again that kenobi personality he's got a witty comment he's good and, and guess what in the end he's not wrong um and then the fighting final one i just want to acknowledge uh if in the comics marvel star wars number 20 him and black Crescent do have a doozy of a fight if y'all mm. haven't checked that out uh it's part of the excitement that a lot of people had when black Crescent showed up and then the thoughts you know or is he gonna show up in the kenobi series i I don't believe so. I'm not expecting that, but I also wouldn't be opposed to it. Uh, it's a great, it's a great thing. Uh, it's a great moment. Um, uh, check it out. A lot of people love it. And I do as well. Is that where Chrysanthemum gets the scar? I no, I do believe he already has it when we first meet him in, in, in the first issue in the video okay. as well, but uh, that'd be cool. Right. That's a good. What if, um, who knows? Maybe it's uh, he gets an emotional scar for sure. He gets an emotional scar. Yeah. No, I mean, you, this is great. You are just filling up my Kenobi reread <laughs> list. <laughs> Check it out. Marvel number 20 back in the day. It's great. We have reached our number one choices, our favorite Obi-Wan Kenobi moments. This has been a lot of fun as we race towards the Kenobi series on Disney+. Plus. Uh, let us go here, though. I'll go first with my number one. And yes, uh, we are not done talking about Star Wars Rebels, Twin Sons. Uh, great episode. Great Star Wars moments. And there's a lot to pull apart. Uh, you had uh, the, the thing earlier with the lightsaber, which is uh, powerful. And I'll go to the end of the sequence with... <clears throat> Uh, him, I guess you could say winning the fight, but I, I even hesitate to say it was a win. It was Darth Maul dying and Darth Maul dying in his uh, arms. Yes, it's a moment of great empathy, great compassion. And, and this character, Maul, who had uh, been battling not just Kenobi, but the Jedi, the Jedi Order, and his feelings of losing his position in the galaxy, losing his power, having it taken away, not being able to process that. But also the added information we've learned over the years of Maul kind of feeling, well, I had force power. Why didn't, know, why didn't the Jedi find me? Why was I pushed into this life? Um, not really a lot of choice with Talzin and Palpatine and became this uh, blunt weapon and, and, and him never really getting through that and, and never changing, never growing and being dominated by vengeance. So it all it all ends in the arms of this person he'd spend a lifetime trying to destroy. And that says a lot about Kenobi. But I also think of that quote. It's one of my favorite Star Wars quotes now. I don't have tattoos, but if I did, I'd get the whole thing just in a big paragraph form right on my forehead. Uh, it is uh, the quote that uh, goes, if you define yourself by the power to take life, the desire to dominate, to possess, then you have nothing. And it keeps in line with a lot of things Kenobi has even said to Maul. You'd mentioned the great line from the lawless, the great moment there. And he's saying it and moments later takes the life of Maul. And Kenobi's not dancing he's not celebrating he's not he doesn't have a pithy comment not kicking dirt on him he's holding him as he dies and provides comfort because he he understands this I, I, this is not power to take maul's life does not show my great power um it is not about the domination it is not about ending this rivalry after all these decades uh it is not about that and kenobi's never been about that and so it is this beautiful moment this beautiful image sad tragic uh but at the same time heartfelt ending to this long rivalry which it is it is and it's part of this the star wars the star wars rivalry we we do enjoy but this the why of the moment the power of the moment uh is just worth way way more than just some fun plot points over the years 
uh, and it all leads to that moment. So that's my number one choice, him holding Maul as he dies, knowing how uh, he does not define his life uh, via power and uh, killing. So there you oh, go. Number one. Extremely well said. I think that's an absolutely great choice uh, for number one. Uh, I, I I really like comparing it to where Obi-Wan is at in The Phantom Menace, right? We all like mm-hmm. that moment when he's waiting for the laser gate to drop and he's, you know, bouncing on his heels. And in theory, Obi-Wan is doing his duty. He's been told by the Jedi to stop, by the Jedi Council to stop the Sith from, you know, killing Padme. He's there to protect the queen. And so he's kind of doing what he's supposed to do, but it's just let me at this monster that that killed my master, right? Mm -hmm. Um, So that, and and that doesn't go great for him uh, initially when he's got that energy. It's only when he slows down and is uh, thoughtful that it makes a difference. So to see that from the beginning of that, there's that moment in the Clone Wars where early on when Maul first returns, where he almost gets Kenobi when he kind of chides Kenobi. He's like, it seems like you want vengeance, right? Yeah. Um, to show the absolute growth that this character has gone on, that there is absolutely not a shred of vengeance or anger. It's sadness. It's tragedy that they all had to go through this dance. And it's there in how he tries to, you know, avoid the fight. He needs to defend Luke. Uh, But then when he does actually, you know, make the cut, um, he could just he could have just let Maul drop to the floor, right? Mm. The fact mm. that he moves so fast to catch him and to hold him in exactly the same way that Kenobi uh, holds two other people that Maul has taken from him mm-hmm. really drives home. Like that's amazing. Mm. That amount of mercy is amazing. To to it's one thing to just say to a, a, a random angry person of violence who must be stopped like that it's not personal i i just need to stop you it's one thing to to be kind to that person but to be kind to somebody like maul who has taken so much from him is just such a great powerful a uh, jedi moment and it really really drives home the philosophy of defense of mm. i have no even though you've you've done really awful things i don't i don't have malice to you I couldn't let you take the action you were going to. Mm -hmm. And that's the heart of defense. And now that I've stopped you from hurting somebody else, I'm here for you and I'll give you what tiny solace I can in your last moments. Like that's, Mm. that's so Jedi. (laughs) That's so Jedi, pure Jedi, pure Kenobi. Uh, mm-hmm. Well said to you as well, sir. I know, I know this moment means a lot to you as well. Mm. Uh, so we had to feature it here because it's so powerful. But that is my number one choice. But we're not done. Joseph, take us home. What is your number one favorite Obi-Wan Kenobi moment? Uh, my number one favorite Obi-Wan Kenobi moment is him dying. <laughs> <laughs> uh, just go straight for the irony. Uh, it, it is the, the first appearance in A New Hope, and there, there are two particular moments that I, I want to pull out. It is really, when I was thinking about this list, uh, I was like, oh man, this is going to be so hard. And I was like, no, you know what the number one moment is? It's the little look that Obi-Wan gives back to Luke and Leia together, and that little smile oh, yeah. when he knows what he's going to do. He's going to sacrifice himself to distract Vader uh, so that the Skywalker twins can go on to fulfill their destiny. And it's just this little, almost kind of cheeky smile. And it, it's got layers to me. It's got the like, I, Kenobi, have gone on this long journey. I've endured lots of pain. I've failed. I've had missteps. But here at the end of my journey, I am confident that I have done what I needed to do. I'm passing the baton of of hope uh, to this next generation and to, to Anakin and Padme's kids who are involved in the fight and doing the right thing. And if I make this choice, you know, I can be there uh, for them. There's all of that power in it. And there's also like, I just really like looking at this fight is um, Obi-Wan beat Anakin Vader twice. Uh, mm-hmm. We'll see what happens in the Kenobi television show. But on Mustafar, it was in brutal combat, flames and fury, right? Uh, and he physically defeated him. He won that battle. Yeah. And then here on the Death Star, he wins again because Vader has, has no idea what the fight is about. Vader, like Maul, is it's just about 
violence. <laughs> it's about ending and taking. It's about Vader finally getting vengeance and ending uh, Kenobi. And Kenobi knowing that he has um, a gift, a power, as he describes it to Vader, that Vader is not aware of and probably can't even conceive of when he is in the throes of the dark side. The idea of sacrificing yourself so you can be there for someone else. That the ultimate power is to be that selfless. Like that smile to me is about like, I am saving the Skywalker twins. I'm completing my journey. And also, oh, Anakin, I'm going to fool you one more time. <laughs> There's like a little, it's it perhaps me, uh, uh, you know, filling in all of their journey. But it is almost like one last calm down, Anakin. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man, well said. It and I, I'm not. Please say more if if, if you'd like. I just I love the Joseph's moment. It, 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 Kenobi's death is big and the, the big the big over, you know, the overarching uh, you know goal and story and purpose and all that kind of stuff. But I have always been drawn to that smile, and in a way that I've never fully understood. You know, it's just like, what's he thinking? What's he doing? I think you're doing. You, I think what you're saying, Joseph, really works. It really connects and it's really what's there. But again, it's also just thinking even outside of the character, it's this performance of Sir Alec Guinness. I always mention where it's like th this guy is so good. He comes in and he plays this crazy space opera character. You know, just everything is a walk and talk and dog. What's going on? But he just brings his skills. And from there, from these moments, including this smile, you can build out this wonderful character. And Ewan McGregor comes in and takes it and runs within his direction. James Arnold Taylor takes it in his, even Stephen Stanton doing the, the, the Twin Suns episode. And, but it all comes from all these moments that are built into his performance. He leaves so much room for that tip of the iceberg storytelling. It's the, the tip of the character's experience. <laughs> you. And I love it. And it's right before death, he smiles. It's peace in a way. It's always kind of mm -hmm. represented this peace and this true victory. And it's always kind of throw me for a wonderful loop. Like what's, a, what's he up to? What's his angle? <laughs> what's he got going on there? And I love that. Yeah. Yeah. I really love this perspective. We've talked about it a lot in the, the hut of exposition scene mm -hmm. the little pauses he gives that, that then allows so much to be filled in. But this smile, it, it's so many things, but one of the things is it's knowing yeah. it's like, I got this. And it's allowed years and years and years of storytelling to fill in all the possibilities of these. It's a knowing smile. But what all does he know? Mm -hmm. You know, and when you just watch that film, if there'd never been another Star Wars film, that smile would work great because it is the mentor sacrificing themselves for the next generation and knowing the wisdom of that. Uh, but now with all this other storytelling, there's so much else you can fill in of of what he might know. Um and the final part of this is to just kind of extend out a little bit from that moment where he chooses uh, to sacrifice himself. Uh, people always have fun with the line of, you know, I'll become more powerful than you can possibly imagine. Um, and I love the fact that the power is just to be there for Luke, mm. but that that really translates in that film into great power uh, without him being able to express himself to Luke without him being able to be there for Luke and communicate to Luke, Luke wouldn't have taken the shot at the Death Star that he needed to. Um, and it is Luke's victory, but it's really important. I think if you're looking at Kenobi's journey to see it is that's the victory. Mm. That's the great power to be able to continue to be there for Luke and to help him and to help him in an absolutely critical moment. Uh, I love that moment that, you know, you're supposed to use a targeting computer. Mm. Everybody knows that. That's what it's for. It, it does things that humans can't do. And the absolute power of, of Luke Skywalker going, should I listen to uh, what everybody thinks is normal and correct to use the targeting computer? Or should I trust uh, the ghost whispering in my ear from somewhere yeah. and use my instincts? You know, the fact that Luke, trust that voice that's obi-wan's great power that's obi-wan's great victory absolutely i cannot add anything more than what you just said it is obi-wan kenobi's great victory and a great way to close up this list <laughs> we could go on and on we could pick more moments and what's great joseph uh, in about six weeks we'll probably have a bunch of moments that we might want to add to an updated version of this list uh final thought you know from you um 
yeah, Kenobi is so beloved. I, I absolutely love Kenobi, but you've connected with Kenobi on a, on a level that's, um, uh, uh, you know, uh, known here at Force Center, <laughs> um, much like me and Admiratus. Um, how are you feeling as, as we've ranked these moments going in to the Kenobi series? Are you too excited to comprehend? <laughs> no, I'm just, I'm really excited. I have a lot of faith in uh, the, all of the creative people involved the way they've already talked about the show what we've seen in the show and i'm really i'm excited for the old and the new i absolutely love uh, kenobi and it, it is really kind uh that that people know that and you say nice things can and, and people tweet things but like i have i want to be like obi-wan about obi-wan i have no sense of ownership <laughs> yeah. uh, you know uh i don't want to be in a com competition to be the the biggest fan i want to let go and be surprised uh by the television show you know mm -hmm. um i have lots of uh feelings of like ooh, i think that he'd be feeling this i think he'd be doing this and i think that some of those ma will materialize in the show and some things i'll be surprised by and it'll be an opportunity to see something uh, from a certain point of view that maybe I didn't consider. And I'm excited for the old and the new. I'm excited for the moments in the television show that are going to happen where I'm going to go like, yes, that's exactly what I imagine. And I'm going to be excited for those moments where like, wow, I never really thought of it that way, but it makes sense. I I'm excited to, to have both of those experiences uh, while enjoying new Kenobi. Oh, absolutely. I can't wait. I can't wait. I'm going to be firing up that laptop in a hotel room to watch those first couple of episodes. <laughs> but it's going to be so fun. We can't wait. Well, before we get to new Kenobi, we needed to celebrate all that we could about the old Kenobi and what we know so far. So many great moments. Joseph, thank you so much for your list here. We are out of here. Hey, if you want to find us, we're Force Center a Pod uh, on Twitter. Use the hashtag Star Wars Ranked if you want to share your favorite Obi-Wan Kenobi moments so far. Uh, we're on Instagram and YouTube as well. Uh, we are also on Facebook at Force Center Podcast. You can uh, get merch at tpublic.com slash user slash Force Center. Get an audio book on us, uh, maybe Kenobi by Jonathan Jackson Miller. If you want to go back in time and read that one by going to Audible Trial dot com slash force center also recommend brotherhood by mike chen great kenobi stuff in there as well you can support us directly if you want at patreon.com slash force center we always appreciate your support you can follow me at ken knapsack or go to my website ken uh we're going to be in star wars celebration soon very soon thursday uh may 26 2 p.m podcast stage joseph and i will be guesting on alex and molly damon of star wars explains podcast appearance there gonna be a lot of fun joseph where can they find you on uh, on all the socials and all the good stuff and maybe where they can send you a nice Kenobi message. <laughs> yeah, if you want to send me uh, some Kenobi thoughts or Kenobi message, you can find me on Twitter, Instagram, TikTok is at Joseph Scrimshaw and you can check out all my other adventures on my website, josephscrimshaw.com and I want to be sure to say to you, Ken, I thought your list was absolutely great and you said some great things that got me thinking about Kenobi in even more in different ways so I'm extremely excited for that and uh, uh, also to bring it full circle, final thought on the uh, Kenobi novel in case it wasn't clear, I do recommend it. I'm going to give it three Kenobi lightsabers out of the three that he had uh, all ignited. Check out that book. Check it out indeed. All right, my friends, that is it for this time. Star Wars has been ranked. <laughs>